I want to begin with two questions, and I need your participation. How many of you have been to a movie more than five times last year? Please raise your hand. Oh, a lot of you. Thank you. How many of you have been to an opera or classical music concert more than five times last year? Please raise your hand. I'm so glad to see some hands. Thank you. <laughs> when you go to a movie and if you didn't like it, what will you do? Next time, you'll pick another kind of movie to go again. And if you still didn't enjoy the second time, what will you do? You will still pick another kind of movie to go again. But what about classical music concerts or opera? Many people told me, I've been to the opera or Philharmonic once, but I didn't like it. So I guess it's not my cup of tea. So there are obviously bias people have for classical music and opera. My name is Lucy. I was born and bred in Hong Kong. I'm very passionate about opera, singing opera, learning about opera. I also started my own opera company, More Than Musical, which is a registered nonprofit in Hong Kong. Our mission is to make opera accessible and approachable to the modern society. The reason that I'm sharing this with you today is not only because I'm very proud of More Than Musical, it's also because my opera journey started at the lowest and the most painful point in my life. In the following, I'm going to share with you my journey with opera, the society's journey with opera, and why opera matters to you and to me, and I'll leave you with a challenge. I hope by the end of this presentation, you all will be saying, whoa, I'm definitely going to an opera this month. <laughs> my music journey began at home. I was 10 years old, I had my first piano lesson. I really enjoyed it, and I practiced a lot. My parents, after their long day of work, they came home and they said to me, can you please stop practicing because it's so noisy? <laughs> then they moved into university. I became a music student majored in piano. As you could imagine, I was very happy. It was the best thing ever happened to me. Every day, my job was to practice on my piano and to learn about music. But not long after I've started my degree, around six months, my right arm around this area started to hurt whenever I practiced. The feeling was like there were little needles flowing through my bloodstream. And a few months later, it got so painful that I could only stop completely because I couldn't even hold a pen or chopsticks. I was completely devastated. I went to a physiotherapist two, three times a week. I had no idea whether were I able to recover or how long does it take to recover. At the same time, I was facing the pressure of whether would I be able to graduate. Because as a music student, I need an instrument, but now I can't use my right hand. And so all in a sudden, I can only become a voice student. My peers who majored in voice, they all have been learning singing years before they enter university. And me, I started from zero and we were facing the same examination and assessment. To begin with, I really freaked out. <laughs> and learning singing is very different from learning a physical instrument, because now this instrument is inside my body. It takes a lot of self-imagination and exploration to learn this instrument. Sometimes I got really confused. My voice teacher said to me, Lucy, I cannot cut myself apart to show you how you should coordinate your inner muscles or your vocal cord or your mind. You have to figure out by yourself. And so I practice very hard. It means a lot of singing plus some screaming and yelling. But a few months later, my voice started to change. It became rounder and louder. And the most important is, I got so much more deeply connected to my inner self because singing is a very honest process. When I was singing in front of people, I felt like I was standing there naked because there's nothing to hide and nowhere to hide. Singing has to be pulled out straight from my heart. And at the same time, I also started to learn about opera, which is the next big treasure I found in classical music. Even though most of the operas we hear today were written in 100 to 150 years ago, still the drama remains because opera is all about human relationships and emotions, emotions that we all share today. Love, hatred, jealousy, longings. All these emotions are being wrapped up in beautiful singing music, 
together with orchestral accompaniment, text visualization. To me, opera is a very complex but a beautiful art form which touches my heart. And so after a few years of hard work, I finally graduated as a voice student, and I also became an opera fanatic. And then I came to London to continue my education. It was 10 years ago. I came to this city, which is the heaven for classical music lovers. I went to almost all the productions at the Royal Opera House, always sitting at the very top with my student tickets. And then when I looked down to the stage, all the singers, they appeared tiny to me, but their voices penetrated through all the space, conquered over the orchestra, and came into my ears so clearly. How much effort and practices does it take? And at the same time, they are telling me a story and convincing me that I am a witness of their story. In those few hours, I could just sit there and merge myself into the love and the pain and the drama and the beauty that opera brought me. Opera is truly a moment of escape from the world and a shared moment of magic. But when I look down to the stage, I also see the audiences sitting right in front of the stage at the most expensive seat. Can you guess who they are? They are a wave of the silver hair generation. So they are a bit old. <laughs> and I was thinking to myself, like, well, is opera meant to be an elderly entertainment? And if it is, then what is the future of this art form? And if it is, then what's wrong about me? Why would I enjoy this so much? Why would I feel like I was the only young Asian girl sitting there enjoying opera? And was it the true intention of these opera composers when they wrote their masterpieces to serve the social elite? Opera is meant to be heap and modern and challenging. So let me give you this example. This is the most famous French opera, Carmen, written by Bizet and premiered in 1875. You must have heard some music from this opera, including this one. L'amour est au fond de Bohème, il n'a jamais, jamais connu de noix. Si tu ne m'aimes pas, je t'aime, si châtre me prongue de toi. Si tu ne m'aimes pas, si tu ne m'aimes pas, je t'aime. Mais si je t'aime, si je t'aime, prongue de toi. So, thank you. <laughs> Carmen is a pretty gypsy lady. She is a secret factory worker and she is a smuggler. One day she was being put into jail because she initiated a fight. And in the jail, she managed to seduce Don Jose, which, who is the officer, by singing and dancing around him. And so he released her, fell in love with her, and even followed her to become a smuggler. <laughs> As the story goes on, Carmen then fell out, out of love with him, and she would rather die for freedom than to be with him anymore. And so he killed her. A story like this is kind of acceptable today. You can find similar stories in TV and movies. But the story like this was accept un totally unacceptable and extremely provocative at 1875. Women at those days, they couldn't be seen drinking or dancing or dancing or singing in the public, not to even mention fighting. They were not sexually free. So B says he was challenging all these social norms and he was pushing people out of the comfort zone. So can you guess what happened at the premiere? It was a complete failure. B says he, he was convinced that he has written the worst opera disaster in history. And he literally passed away three months after the premiere with a heart attack. And in the last three months of his life, he tried very hard to edit this opera, hoping that it would be accepted by the world one day. It then took another three years for this opera to be performed throughout Europe. Carmen is one of the many similar stories in opera history. Opera is meant to be heap and modern and challenging. So one and a half year ago, when my friend and I we were starting More Than Musical, we want to reveal the truth of opera to the modern world, and we want young people to come to our opera, find it connecting and engaging. 
In order to achieve that, we have a few adaptations into our opera. First, opera has to be shorter. It cannot be three, four hours anymore. Our opera is 90 minutes, which is a commercial movie length. And secondly, no more backstaging. Our productions are being done in small, intimate theater like this one, so there's no barrier between you and opera singers. We believe if you can see the facial expression and feel the vocal, vocal cord vibrations of the singer, you will be amazed by the power of human voice. And thirdly, our characters, they are more than people, in more than clothing, and they use technology. <laughs> and finally, we even introduce a bar into our opera. This is a bar for wine and champagne. This is not a bar you found in ballet classes. So during the performance, this is part of it, but after the performance, singers and audience, they mingle around the bar. So what do they do? They took selfie, they put it on social media, they do hashtags. So in all that we do, we want to show you there should be no barrier between you and opera, because opera is a shared moment of magic and an escape from the world. All these pictures were being taken in our last year production of La Traviata. We have done six performances and they were completely sold out. So finally, let me challenge each of you here today by asking yourself these questions. What is your opera? What are you passionate about? How can you be a part of something that's bigger than yourself? Do you have dreams that you always wanted to pursue, but you worry about how the other people view you or judge you while you're trying to make your dreams come true? Starting something new or challenging the tradition is risky and scary, but it will only make you stronger and much more resilient. One's mind doesn't know it's empty until it's enriched, so please open your mind channel yourself into whatever you find transformational. Sometimes challenges, well, sometimes your dreams and passion lies in the biggest challenges in life. But please, don't escape from it. Dwell within it, and then expand from it. I'm sure by doing so, you and the people around you will be inspired, enlightened, and enriched. Thank you.